Resident Lighting Specialist to Arc Residential to Mass House. Welcome to Residential Tech Talks. I'm Jeremy Glowacki, Executive Editor of Residential Tech Today. On this week's podcast, Christopher Sterl joins us from Las Vegas, Nevada, where he is founder and CEO of Acoustic Design Systems. This month marks 20 years in business for ADS as an integrator and com of commercial and residential home automation and security solutions. ADS has spent the past two decades perfecting a recipe for success, which includes keeping up with evolving technology trends, developing home builder community partnerships, and taking advantage of economic and market opportunities. Our guest today has been a frequent contributor to Residential Tech Today, but amazingly, this is the first time we've had the opportunity to speak to one another. Today, I'm hoping Chris can provide insights into what it takes to manage a growing business in an ever-changing industry that operates in an ever-changing city. Chris Sterl, thanks for joining us today to chat about your career and to share some of your residential tech insights. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, it's a rare thing for... Um, me to meet a guest basically for the first time on the podcast. Um, sometimes I have like a pre uh, conversation with them or I've just known them over the years. I feel like I know you, but yet um, because you have that rare um, ingredient in your company and that you have a PR agency, I've usually just worked through them and you come back on a deadline and give me a quote when I need it. And we've just never had a chance to chat. So um, I saw a video of you doing uh, kind of a walkthrough on a property one time uh, on, on LinkedIn. And I thought, okay, this guy's not afraid to be on camera, so let's get it going. And it just didn't work out at the time. You're super busy. I'm sure you're busy right now, but I appreciate you taking the time. So um, what what is um, a guy from the Midwest doing in Las Vegas? Let's just kind of start there. It looks like we, we both are fellow Midwesterners. You grew up in Mentor, Ohio. I did, yeah. Well, what I'm doing now is freezing in Las Vegas because it's been snowing here and unseasonably cold the last couple of weeks. So uh, I, I moved away from Ohio to get away from snow and cold and wearing a jacket, and uh, it has followed me all the way out here to the West. That's not fair. That's not the way it's supposed to work. It, and honestly, it is not. And, and you know what? I was just uh, out West myself like a couple of times, and I kept getting hit by cold weather, and it just was not what I was looking forward to while I was out there. Um, so no, my yeah. handicap is suffering this week. Oh, oh well, I, I don't feel too sorry for you about that. And the, the, the <laughs> tan that I can tell you have uh, means that it's not been all terrible uh, this winter. Yes, so. it's only from here up and from here down. So. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, so I, I, I loved like going back and looking through your um, your bio that you have on your website. And uh, and I see that um, you you got uh you got out of community college, Lakeland Community College there in Ohio, and began your AV career in around 1995. Can you kind of just take us through? I don't usually go linear, but I, I do want to kind of get your, your bio, bio out of the way just because it leads you to where you are today um, in Vegas. No. So how did you get no, started? No, no problem whatsoever. Um, I think I got started where a lot of uh, us who have been in the business for a while got started. I got started a bit in car audio. I got a job at a big box store selling car audio because I wanted a car stereo and being a 18 year old fresh out of high school kid, I couldn't afford to pay retail. So I got a job so I could uh, take advantage of the employee discount and to work in their car audio at the big box place also had to sell home audio gear and set up all of the displays in the store. And I found so much more fun in doing that than I ever had in car stereo. I'm not a small in stature guy i'm six foot five so yeah. hanging out under the dash of an automobile anymore was uh, it's not something i would ever be interested in anymore but living rooms are a lot bigger place and fit me better so i went from uh, that big box store to a local custom into integration shop where we would do they were big into sony and uh, Bose lifestyle systems when Bose was the big thing back in the day sure. and kind of cut my teeth uh, pulling wires and installing things with uh, Bose systems and then and delivering 35 inch Trinitron televisions. Oh man. So how do, how do you find that integrator? Because that, that's one of those things to this day, it's so hard for people to find, um, you know, uh, employees and installers. And, and there you were at the big box. Did, did you, um, seek it out or did you get recruited? How did that work for you in that transition? 
my best friend at the time, his uncle actually owned the store. Oh. So he was working over there doing everything and they needed help. And he and I have kind of been inseparable since we're 11 years old, so much so to the tune that he still works for my company today uh, for the, he has for the last 17 years and he runs the whole production side of my company. Oh man, that's awesome. Great that you can keep that relationship going all these years. Um, Absolutely. Hetero life mates. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And and it wasn't lo long after that, that you, you did make that move to Las Vegas. And, and it looks like you, I guess you guys moved to, to out there together. Is that how it worked? Yeah, we, had, we uh, originally moved out here together and we worked for, um, my cousin had a small um, integration shop here in Las Vegas at the time. And we moved out here to do that together. Um, we both quickly left there. And uh, I started working at the show EFX at the MGM, doing props and kind of understanding more about professional sound and professional lighting. I wasn't hands-on programming boards, but just being in that environment around the more professional setting gave me a good idea about commercial audio and what it took to put on stage shows, uh, which was a cool education. And then I left there in 2001, right before my daughter was born, to start acoustic design. And then 03 kind of got really serious about it because at 23, who's really serious about anything? Right. Uh, so in 2003, I was 25 years old and I incorporated acoustic design and never, ever looked back. Yeah. And um, I, I did, before we move on completely out of that, uh, the uh, MGM sure. show that you did, that was really yeah. uh, something that caught my eye when, when I first started getting quotes from you. Um, and remind us what that show was all about, because I kind of vaguely remember it, but it's been a while and uh, I didn't look it up. Tell me more about that. Sure. It was, uh, it was a, uh, your typical Las Vegas strip show. It was singing and dancing. When I first joined, it was Tommy Toon, oh. Tony award-winning Tommy Toon was the headline act at the show. And then, um, as time progressed, I was there for just about two years and near, near the tear end the tail end of my tenure, uh, Rick Springfield was the main act there. <laughs> so I had a fun relationship with both of those guys and with the different dancers and performers and all the technical staff, the rigging, the props people, everything. And I did show calls. So I worked during the show every single night, well, wow. five nights a week. It was a, it was a really fun job at 22, 23 years old. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, it really gives you that taste of the real, um, entertainment side of Vegas there. And then you go into, into the more maybe sedate version, which is the residential side, but commercial pro projects as well. What, what, um, it, I think for folks who don't know other integrators in Vegas, that's, um, seems like a really unique place to be for this business. Um, uh, how would you say if you talk to your peers around the country, your, um, environment there, your, your, uh, just location, uh, is different. Like how did, how are the projects maybe a little different or are they at all? Are they just big houses like anywhere else? Um, I think it's really different. We have a really good relationship with HTA and HTSA. HTSA. Um, my favorite thing about uh, HTSA is meeting other dealers all around the entire country. I love meeting and sharing best practices. I've got a, some very, very close CEO friends across the country. And I think the neatest, the, one of the neatest things is that we all have the exact same business model and a vastly different business model at the same time. People back east, there's no land. So you're usually dealing with a big custom build that's a, either a tear down or some new custom home where they're cutting down a wooded area to build a mansion. And that's a project they're going to be involved with for the next 24 to 36 months where Las Vegas is we've got nothing but land in every direction and the city is expanding and growing in every direction at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. Couple that with all of the money coming to Las Vegas in the last couple of years with the Raiders coming here, the Vegas Knights coming here, uh, lots of talks about a basketball team and a professional baseball team coming here. So then the infrastructure of those teams, the management, the players, the just the revenue associated with that, all of the high-end communities and the mid-level, low-end communities, everything is growing at the exact same rate because there are the players with and the owners with a bunch of money. There are the executives with that middle of the road money and then all the other worker bees. Everyone needs housing. Everyone wants technology. And uh, it's a it's a it's a really, really fun time in this little town of ours. And and what's your visibility like as a company? How do you um, get found by these folks who move to 
to Las Vegas for the first time and and have um, technology needs in their home. Uh, I, I would imagine, like most integrators, you have a word of mouth business for the folks that are already there. Um, but do you have a big showroom or something like that? Uh, we have we have a show home that's by invite only for some of our high end customers. We have a lot of builder relationships with. Um, with high end production, high end production builders, where we have showrooms in their spaces, uh, and then we utilize the show homes of some of our um, builder partners as well for all the communities that we do. We set up our own showrooms in their model home show homes so that we can walk with customers and show off and demo technology in a home that they're anticipating buying, so they can picture themselves using that technology in a space that's going to be theirs one day. So, would you say that you're um more of a production home um, provider of technology or uh, are you, is it kind of a balance between that and the big custom um, homes, the big, big like pa palace type homes that we, we know are in the upper percentage, you know, homeowners? Yeah, um, we have plenty of both. I would say as far as pro a number of projects, there's definitely more production, but dollar value of projects combined, those luxury high-end homes really quickly gain up to what a production home does. The neat thing about where we're at, we don't only focus on the uber wealthy top 0.1% of people for technology because we have this fun saying that uh, a house without technology is just an old house that no one's lived in yet. So technology is the thing that makes a home new. So we are very, uh, we're very ingrained with half a million dollar and up homes Last year, we did 700 new construction homes uh, that ranged from 500,000 to $5 million. So every gambit of technology from in, in, in a home like that. So a typical $500,000 house might have a surround sound and some patio speakers all the way up to a $5 million house that has motorized shades, panelized lighting, um, every type of distributed audio video you can imagine, all the bells and whistles and the fun stuff that we do as integrators. That's great. I mean, I don't normally talk to folks who have that broad of a range in this industry. Um, and, and it's, I think something that I've heard of in Las Vegas from other, um, you know, companies in the past that, that that's maybe more of the, the, the case there. But, uh, I, I love the stat that your uh, agency provided on your anniversary that the first year of your business, you, uh, completed around 20 total jobs. And then yeah. last year, 2022, nearly 3,300. Is that correct? That's, That's correct. an amazing yeah. number of projects in one year. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's a host of projects too. We have a, we have a large division of our company de dedicated just to security. So we have uh, every one of the security systems we installed was a project. We've got 20 years of customers with long-term service. So uh, our service team is constantly updating and uh, fixing all of the problems that our industry sometimes creates. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, and then, like I said, we did 700 new construction yeah. homes alone last year. So they all, it is when I saw that number too, it was fun at our December staff meeting to go over with all of the different departments and pull that data and talk to them and pat them on the back for how much work they were actually able to complete. But when we pulled the data, we were also wildly shocked how quickly it added up. Yeah. And, and speaking of service, you said you have a service department, which um, surprisingly not all integrators do, but uh, you know, it just depends on the size of your company. It looks like you have about 60 employees mm -hmm. and, um, Sir. And, and so that you, you, part of that uh, percentage is uh, um, service. Do you have service plans that you um, try to get uh, clients to sign up for, or are you um, just kind of as you as you as needed service? How, how's that set up for you? And do you have twenty four hour kind of support like you know some of these outsourced kind of companies provide? Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, yeah, I mean, 20 years in business, we've got every type of service customer you could imagine. And then we have a really big partnership with Parasol oh, great. for any new type of installs for the last several years. We were uh, early adopters with Parasol. We, um, we take service very, very seriously as a company. Uh, when building a home, it's, it's, you know you're going to pick out flooring and you're never going to talk to your flooring contractor again. Right. You're going to put a water heater in your house and you're never going to talk to your that 
plumber ever again. But when you put technology in your home, we are partners long term for everything. We're there when your network goes down, when you want to buy a new, the fancy new OLED TV comes out, whatever it might be. We know that we are a service contractor first and we expect long term service. So we've um, altered and changed our business practices as a t uh, to stay with the times to make sure that we can service our customers when they need service. For the most part, we work nine to five, right? Bankers type of hours, what our industry does, but all of our customers also work nine to five. Mm -hmm. So when they're home enjoying their systems, that's when they're gonna see that an Apple TV needed to be rebooted or something might not be working. We wanna make sure that when they're using their systems, they have access to a technician talk, to talk them through, reboot something remotely and just keep them up and running so they can enjoy their systems when they're at home. Uh, I just to speak of what you said about the uh, service department, that's another thing that we saw a big lack in our industry. Uh, there's so often small integrators. We used to be the same exact integrator, but when you're small, you're trying to install a new project today, but the project that we finished last week has got a problem. So we've got to pull off of this new install and go back and fix a problem from the old one. And it just wasn't a profitable or productive business model for us. So we started with, all right, we're gonna have one dedicated service technician that that's all he does is go out and it's a high-end programmer. It's a, it's a knows how to do everything kind of jack of all trades. And he's able to make sure that on a day-to-day -day basis, he can run those appointments to the tune now where we have an in-house security manager or sorry, service manager that deals with the four roaming service techs that are out in the field all day long, solving problems, rebooting things and really being the heroes in our industry. Well, after the break, we will continue our conversation with Chris Duro. Do you want superior smart home automation at a great value? Shelly Wi-Fi relays by Alterco Robotics cover DC to line voltage, allowing you to control lights, outlets, appliances, garage doors, pumps, and much more. There are Shelly sensors and power measurement devices to help you measure temperature, humidity, lux, or motion, and electrical consumption from single wire to three phase with neutral. You can use Shelly with a licensed driver for Control 4, Elon, or other premium systems, as well as your customer's existing hub, voice assistant, or any platform that accepts REST, MQTT, or CoAP. Shelly can make IoT very easy. Available now at Blackwire, City Electric Supply, and Worthington, or at ShellyUSA.com. Welcome back. We're talking with Chris Sterl, founder and CEO of Acoustic Design Systems in Las Vegas. Chris, you said something... Uh, earlier just a minute ago about uh being that one that service provider that's still there um later on uh, in the home's ownership and uh that just came up i was at the light of palooza conference um which i'm sure you're well aware of that event um it very well with htsa and all but um there, there was that conversation of um lighting um ha, ha, being a provider of lighting fixtures versus the electrician doing that and that homeowners just don't have a relationship with their electrician there, but yet sure. the custom integrator, they're the ones that are going to be sitting at the end. This is the exact quote from someone I don't recall who said it is going to be the one sitting at the end of the sofa, talking with the client after the projects, everybody else is gone. So, um, I, I thought that resonated really well with everyone that, uh, that that's a good reason for that. And I noticed on your website that you, you are into lighting fixtures as well, right? We do lighting control and control fixtures. Uh, we sent a good group of our company to, um, of our team to Lightapalooza oh. last year. Yep. We did not go this year. It is on our roadmap to begin specking fixtures and going down that path because we see that is the complete direction our industry is headed because they are all addressable fixtures. It's, it takes the technology that we install to talk to the drivers in those lighting fixtures to make them do all the fun stuff they do, right? Change colors, tunable whites, all of the great new things that are coming with lighting. We have just seen so much growth as a business. And of course, over COVID, we all saw a tremendous amount of business with people staying in their homes and maybe using their travel budget to go towards home projects, technology, a better Wi-Fi, an, enter an enterprise grade Wi-Fi system in their homes so they could do their Zoom calls and work from home. We've taken on new builder partners this past year and to 
we just had to put a pause on the lighting fixture part of things just so we could play keep up and catch up with all of the other business that we've got going until that's running real smooth and on cruise control. And then it's time to add the next bit to our business. Yeah, I see that you've got a ton of builder uh, partnerships, including um, you're a Toll Brothers exclusive, it looks like, right? Um, in yes, sir. That's a, that's a pretty big deal, it sounds like. Um, and uh, understandable on the lighting fixtures and the reason for, for kind of pressing pause on that. It's uh, very much in the for opening stages for most companies. There are few and far between the ones that have been doing it for a while. But I noticed also with your um, on your website how many manufacturers you do list there. It seems like you kind of are willing to work with just about anyone in the, in the industry, unlike some who are really um, tied to just a couple of um, control companies, for instance. You seem like you're able to work with most of them. Is that correct? Or is that... Uh... We, have, we have been over the years, yes. We really just focus now on Control 4 and Savant. Okay. We think those are... I think those give us the best streamlined... Um, process to be able to follow for our technicians. Um, of course, in the past, we've done, we've been Crestron dealers, we've been AMX dealers, we've had custom programmers that write C plus base code and are the smartest people you're el- you'll ever meet in your entire life. But the more that we keep doing this and growing and want to have a viable business model, we saw the need to rely on a team and not a single programmer to make a project come to completion. Also, we worry about the customer in this as well. I mean, I'm sure you've heard, I mean, over the last 30, 40 years, you lose some Crestron code or an employee leaves and takes a laptop or a laptop was stolen. Who owns that code? Is it the customer? Is it the integrator? Is it intellectual property? Did the customer pay for the programming to keep it? And it's never been a really straightforward easy thing for the customer when there was a problem or if a company lost a really key employee that could do that programming, where we found with the softwares with Control 4 and Savant, we can create a replicatable technician that can program the same system the same way over and over again and plug and play any programmer into a project. And he understands what the last guy did and can continue to service that project long term. Yeah, that totally makes sense now. And I wish I'd thought of that, that 20 years in business, of course, you've you've kind of stepped your way up through different manufacturers and you, you represent them yeah. all in your projects over the years and uh, going back and servicing them. So that that's uh, yeah, and we, logical. Anymore, we just focus on what we know works great together. Right. I mean, we don't want to be the first guy through the stoplight and get run over by the late, by, by the first iteration of HDMI, right? Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to deal with that anymore. So we just, we have really core, we, we are, we have access to just about everything, but we have very key partnerships with very important manufacturer partners that we use over and over because we can replicate success with that for all of our customers. I noticed uh, one of the companies, and this I swear I'm not going to just go line by line of your line card, but uh, go for it. <laughs> Origin Acoustics being based there in Vegas now must be uh, interesting for you. Or how much of a uh, role do they play in the projects that you do? Uh, they're they're a really good partner of ours. They are uh, maybe five minutes away from our shop is their warehouse. So it's real easier for one of us to send a pickup truck one direction or the other. Uh, but past that, they have a national agreement with Toll Brothers as a builder that so whatever the option sold to Toll Brothers buyers, the speakers associated with that are origin speakers. We're a big Toll Brothers. Uh, we're our Toll Brothers integrator for Las Vegas. So we sell origin speakers. That's interesting. So and you also, um, just to add to the the Vegas centric uh, aspects of our industry, the the big Savant home there. Did did you uh, were you able to tour that at at one point? When uh, I I think it's still open. It may not be for uh, for that sort of thing. But you know what I'm talking about. I've been by, I've been by the home. Yeah, I know very well what I um, uh, Eagle Century did that. Uh, did that project. Okay. It is a fantastically beautiful home. They did a fantastic job on it. Um, I don't know if it's still open. It's been a couple of years since I was by it, but it was a lovely, beautiful home. Um, we didn't we didn't touch it, didn't have anything to do with it. Right. Yeah. I knew you weren't um, part of it. I just didn't know if it kind of created enough of a buzz or if it was too exclusive to get in to see it um, for you just in the uh, market there to kind of make create that uh, image of what our industry can do you know that seemed like it would be useful at least as a talking point 
Oh, absolutely. It was, um, I, I mean, I, I knew about it and heard about it. I did, there wasn't, it did never felt like there was a giant buzz around it in mm. Las Vegas, that there was this new cool thing. We of course knew that there was this new cool thing because it's the industry we're in. And we saw the project photos with Savant throughout the entire process. And it was a lovely place, but um, we never utilized the space, didn't have anything to do with construction or anything, but kudos to uh, Eagle Century who did, cause it was a really beautiful project. Yeah, and uh, I noticed that uh, we were talking about Las Vegas a lot, but you're expanding a bit too. Um, doing and and this happens a lot with integrators. You you have opportunities to go uh, different uh, cities nearby in your region. Um, how, how did that come about? Was it through the builder, or was it through clients, or how how did you end up in uh, Utah? Yeah, uh, I think. Throughout, even I mean, throughout the history of our company, just like most integrators, you get a great customer who says, "Oh, I also have a vacation home here. Can you do that for me?" And you, you travel and you throw a bunch of gear in a van and stay in a hotel for a week and have a fun time working somewhere else. We don't do many projects like that anymore. It's just it it doesn't fit into our uh, the productivity and profitable business model that we enjoy. Uh, the Utah St. George. Um, opportunity came along to us because of Toll Brothers as a business part, uh, as a builder partner of ours. The local Las Vegas office was opening another office, another region up in St. George, which is only about an hour and 45 minute drive from our office. Uh, and they asked us if we wanted it, we could have it, we could take care of it. So we've been up there now for probably actually working in homes during construction for about nine months. Hmm. And uh, they were just finishing the first large section of models for the model complex for the communities. There are, I want to say 465 homes. Don't quote me on that. But there, uh, there's three different offerings up there of styles of homes. We're just finishing the model complex now, and they're going to be opening the models for the grand opening Oh man, don't quote me again, but I think April 1st is the grand opening for the project up there. We've already been meeting with buyers, meeting with uh, clients, doing option sales, pre-wiring models, pre-wiring QMIs, which would be quick move-in homes from Toll Brothers. And just, uh, they're, it's a, they're experiencing a really big boom in St. George, the same way we are here in Las Vegas. So, you know, we talk about the size of your company and, and it sounds like you really have it um, figured out and you have some great business partners at the builders. Um, one of the things that I hear, you know, year after year in our industry is the challenge of managing their companies. Um, is there any insight you could provide? I don't want to put you on the spot and make you come up no. with this grand uh, answer, but uh, what, what would you say some of the keys to your management style have been? And maybe it's just the types of people you put around you. Um, how have you been successful for 20 years? Uh, hire for skill and fire quickly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a, we have an absolutely incredible team around us. Um, we have, a, our CFO April handles all the money and she was a long time, a long time, um, alarm and fire safety. She had an alarm and fire safety company in Palm Springs that she sold years ago, was looking for a job and came on board with me just about 10 years ago now and tremendously helped my business because I had someone that could just focus on the money and profitability and uh, and I listened to them. I'm not some uh, chip on the shoulder owner that I'm always right because I'm not right all the time. I like to smile and foster good talent and build people up and let people make the best decisions that they think are right along with guiding them to make those right decisions and they all feel like they have the best interests of acoustic design in mind that's that like i said my production the guy who runs my entire production division he's my best friend since we're 11 years old uh my coo and who runs all the audio video installs and our software suites and kind of is just the jack of all trades know it all and my company eric barbine has been I mean, second to none, invaluable to me. He has a lot of give a damn and he's every single day is bringing new ideas to the table, looking at different softwares, looking at ways to better our company. And I say, smile and say, yes, let's give it a try. And, you know, talk, talk like maybe to wrap up here a little bit about the trends other than lighting, which you you've already spoken about um, that are the tech trends that are affecting your business. Um, what, what would you say? The biggest influences are i know the network is the core to everything now and um we've talked about uh service and i'm sure 
ac accessing remote access into um, projects to be able to to fix things now and then is probably good. But what would you say that some of those trends in the technology side that are affecting your business are right now? Uh, definitely enterprise grade networks in every residential setting. Um, the houses being built out here are uh, more expansive. They have a lot of glass and metal and the whole house is surrounded is wrapped in chicken wire. So it creates a nice Faraday cage and you're <laughs> not really getting much network throughout the home very well. So um, uh, identifying the proper places for wireless access points and creating a really well-built managed network for homes is definitely our number one go-to. Uh, we do a lot of access control as well for both our builder partners and for the commercial side of our business. Uh, customers are in love with that because they just have a key fob on their set of keys and it gives them access to their home or business that can do anything for them once they code it in. Meaning I can scan my key fob and the system knows it's Chris and they can turn on my playlist and heat the house up for me and do all the fun automation things that we like to program for. Uh, past that, um, higher end distributed audio is a big, big thing for us and especially outdoor audio. We live in a city that we can enjoy outside just about the entire year if you can uh, deal with the, the heat in the summer, and I guess right now the cold in the winter, but really high-end outdoor entertaining spaces, satellite sub-speaker sets, uh, outdoor televisions. We live in a place where you can enjoy that year-round, so that's a really important thing. And then inside, I mean, no longer putting one big giant speaker on the ceiling uh, to do the right minimal opening type of speakers to match light cans and have a higher end audio experience inside the home or it's more and more popular every day with us. Well, that's great. You've given me a really great sense of your company and um, I, I think left me with a lot of things I want to learn more about and we'll keep in touch and maybe talk again at some point. But uh, Chris, thanks so much for your time today and letting us in on uh, your 20, 20 years in this industry and your success in this industry. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate the time and thanks for everything you guys do to help push our industry forward. This is a, there's not a lot of people that understand our industry or know about our industry. Uh, so the fact that you guys are out there bragging about what we do and how much it's important to homeowners and business owners and just the construction business in general is invaluable, invaluable to us. So thank you so much for your work as well. Christopher Sterl is founder and CEO of Acoustic Design Systems in Las Vegas. You can learn more about this company at AcousticDesignLV.com. And that wraps up today's show. Special thanks to Pretty Easy Podcast for producing and editing this episode. And if you're new to Residential Tech Talks, please subscribe to the weekly podcast wherever you watch or listen to podcasts. Also, check out all the latest residential tech news at the magazine's website, ResTechToday.com, where you can also subscribe to the print or digital magazine, and to our Tuesday and Friday email newsletters. Until next time, please stay safe, stay inspired, and let us know if you have a great story to tell. Residential, 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 residential,